FWC Executive Director Eric Sutton. Eric, thank you. Thank you. The Vice Chairman of the Fish and Wildlife Commission, Steve Hudson. My dear friend, Ron Alligator Bergeron. Well, Ron, 10th, 10th, 10th Floridian. I know you've got a long history. Your whole family's got a long history in Florida. And uh, right. thank you, Ron. Okay. Um, I'd also like to thank my dear good friend, the Chairman of the Miami-Dade County Commission, Pepe Diaz, for being with us. Pepe, Pepe has always been very supportive of all the things we do. But before I make a few remarks, I want to recognize Senator Anna Maria Rodriguez. Where's Anna? I saw her. There she is. Okay. Thank you, Anna. And, um, and with that, you know, it's amazing how time has flying, flown since the governor has gotten into office. But from day one, the governor has been committed to eradicating this python from the Everglades. And he's put his money where his mouth is. He literally called me a couple of months ago and says, tell me what kind of technology we can use to fight, fight the python. Bring it to me. I'll help, it. I'll help support it. I'll help finance it. I'll help put the money on the table. He's just been so supportive. Madam First Lady, please pass on our compliments to the governor for all his support. Uh, with that, I'm going to introduce the First Lady, our beautiful First Lady of Florida, uh, here to the podium. She's got a couple of special announcements to make. Madam First Lady. Now, I have to thank Rodney and all of our environmental folks behind us who have done so much to ensure that we leave Florida and its environment better to God and our children than we found it. I also have to thank Rodney because he was instrumental in me getting the governor our 10-year anniversary present. So one of these little suckers that came out of the Everglades, one of the pythons, we made into a pair of cowboy boots. And so they're a little loud, but the governor, if you ever see him wearing python skin boots, that's our 10-year anniversary present. Um, so uh, listen, it's, um, it's really neat for me to be here. This is a bucket list, uh, honestly. Ever since the governor was first elected, I never had the opportunity to go about, uh, out in an airboat. It's really funny because Alligator Ron just told me that I can drive the airboat, so I don't know how that's going to go. My five-year-old daughter this morning, when we woke up, she said she wanted to go with me, and I thought, you know, pythons and alligators and five-year-olds at airboats probably was not the best or the safest idea, so we'll give her some pictures when, when she gets home or when we get home. You know, when I was first learning about the pythons, I really had no idea first how much they're devastating the local ecosystem. I also didn't have an appreciation for how you catch these things. I thought people were going out with nets and sophisticated traps and infrared, and there may be some of that. But I'll tell you what, I'm impressed that you have people really from across the nation, I think 32 states are participating in the Python Challenge. I think people are coming as far away from Canada to do this. But when they do this, they're doing it with a stick a long stick, but a stick nonetheless, and they're pulling these guys out by their tail. I mean, they're committed, just as we are, to ensuring that we are preserving the Everglades better to the next generation. Um, we're doing everything that we can from the projects that you see the governor has announced on a daily basis. It seems like he's doing uh, uh, things to support the environment. I remember the first day that he was elected, I went out with him. His very first day in office was his commitment to the environment. He pledged at the time $2.5 billion. A lot of people were saying, oh, you can't do that. The legislature won't support it. Not only did they support his initiative to prioritize our environment, they did so in spades by increasing the funding to $3.3 billion. Uh, and $1.2 billion of that is going right to the Everglades. And we can talk about the C-44 reservoir, the C-43, talk about the, the water now flowing south through the Tamiami Trail, cleaning the water. You can even look back to some of the things he did when he took the mission to Israel and the technology that came out of there when we brought back to Florida ways to combat the blue-green algae with tablets. It's literally dissolving this stuff. The innovation that you're seeing is a game-changer for the state of Florida. His blue-green algae task force, we talk about the Red Tide task force, the implementation of a chief science officer, uh, the trade mission I mentioned, the wildlife corridor also signed under the governor because as we see so many people from around the country flocking to freedom in Florida. We want to preserve the wildlife. 
Uh, and so that has been a priority of both of ours. And also increasing crimes and penalties for our polluters and the septic to sewer conversions. All of these initiatives, and that's just skimming the surface that the governor has done, has been simply because from that first day in office to where we are today, it is our commitment that we want to ensure that we leave Florida better to our children and better to God than we found it. So I'm excited to go out hunt up some pythons, literally, hope to catch a python, not going to be using my hands, may touch a stick, may touch that guy, we'll see, I don't know, I, I, I said I would get, you know, relatively close, but touching is a whole new ball game, and hopefully see, you know, the wonders that are the, the Everglades, and so it's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here. One of the announcements I will say quickly, Alligator Ron Bergeron, uh, obviously a fearless advocate for the environment. Uh, he's going to sweeten the pot a little bit by including a $10,000 bonus uh, to those guys out there. And gals, might I add, out there fighting the snakes. And so God bless you and thank you for being here and your commitment to Florida's environment. Our next speaker is Secretary of DEP, Sean. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and First Lady. Uh, good morning, all. It is a pleasure to be here today in America's Everglades. Um, to kick off the 22 Florida Python Challenge. Um, and as the First Lady said, it's no secret under the governor's leadership um, and the, the governor's focus calling for expedited Everglades restoration and making that a top priority for DEP and our partners at the Water Management District. So under the governor's leadership, and the First Lady mentioned this, $3.3 billion for Everglades and the restoration of water quality throughout the state. And again, with 1.7 of that actually going dedicated to Everglades restoration. And I, I kid the governor. And, you know, it's one of those full disclosure moments of that, that universe of folks when he made that command for 2.5, like, ah, do you really believe that that's going to happen? Well, I might have been in that camp that was kind of questioned my head if that was happening, but look at us now, how far we've exceeded that goal and how it's going to be a catalyst for us moving forward. And if you think about those totals, that's, that's almost what? I think that's more than, mm, if you take the 12 previous years, that's as much as the 12 previous years. And again, I just want to put that in context for you when you think about the momentum that we've achieved under the governor's leadership. Um, one of the important parts of this, and the First Lady talked about it, you know, a big part of Everglades restoration, of course, you think about sending more water to the Everglades to hydrate that key ecosystem. But one of the things, we're already seeing results. Florida Bay is starting to already reach some of its salinity goals. And so that is amazing when you think about it, because that's the first time that's occurred in decades. I mean decades. So. So obviously, and another important point and part of this is of Everglades restoration, again, maybe little known to some, but it's the eradication of these invasive species that cause havoc throughout the ecosystem. They disrupt the ecosystem by competing with our native wildlife, you know, hunting various food sources that are native to the actual Everglades, birds, mammals, and other reptiles. And so since 2019, we've taken unprecedented action to remove these critters. Um, and again, Governor DeSantis was clear. He directed FWC and DEP to continue to make sure we make it a priority. We've made state parks accessible. I know they've got partnerships with the federal government to do everything we can to make sure all lands that are subject to this issue are available. And so right now, I think we've increased the availability of over 134,000 acres of land to make sure that we are being as targeted and strategic, strategic as we can to, to remove the pythons. And so it's a coordinated effort. Um, there are a lot of agencies involved, our partners at the Water Management District, FWC, our state agencies, and researchers that continue to work to remove these invasive species. And again, it provides a unique opportunity for the public to go out there and be a part of ecosystem restoration. And to the First Lady, I don't know if I'm one of those folks that will go out there, um, but I can offer my full, full support from afar. No, I'm just kidding. I think Ron's just challenged me to get out there on a the boat and remove one, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna back down off on, on a challenge so again good luck to the participants of this of this year's challenge you play again you play a pivotal role um, to help protect our Everglades and best of luck to this year's participants so thank you thank you Secretary Hamilton next speaker is Eric Sutton executive director of the Fish and Wildlife Commission Eric thank you mr. chairman thank you madam first lady for being here secretary um, 
It was literally two days um, when uh, the governor was elected. I, I got to meet him, and 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 he certainly uh, committed so much to the environment. Um, the agency, Florida Fish and Wildlife, is stronger today than it's ever been because of his support and because of everyone that's here in support of this particular problem. And I would be remiss if I didn't say really appreciate the governor's thoughtfulness and the appointment of the seven commissioners that we have. They are outstanding. They're quite professional. They're approachable, and they represent um, a, a great constituency in, in the state of Florida. Invasive species are a nationwide problem um, for, for a variety of reasons, from Asian carp in the Midwest and, and certainly here in Florida we see a lot of invasive reptiles, and the python is kind of the flagship for that. Uh, and, and so we are leading the nation in how to tackle invasive species. How? by making it not our agency's problem to solve, making it all of our problems to solve. So the participation of every individual out there, everybody standing here, and everybody in the media that's helping us get the word out, this is going to help and lead in the nation, and I appreciate it. Um, and so thank you again, uh, First Lady, it's such an honor. Always enjoy uh, getting to see you. And then lastly, for my mom and dad, see, catching snakes as a kid does pay off. So thank you, everyone, I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric. Our next speaker, my dear friend, Alligator Ron Bergeron with the South Florida Water Management District. I also want to introduce Ben Butler. Ben, one of the board members. Thank you for coming, Ben. Thank you, Rodney. Howdy, everybody. Howdy. Welcome to the beautiful Everglades, one of the natural wonders of the world. We're very lucky to be here today. And when I drove in, I seen this beautiful rainbow over the Everglades. So I think the Everglades God is looking down upon us. But the first thing I want to do, I want to, I want to thank our governor Ron DeSantis and our first lady Casey DeSantis for fighting to save America's Everglades. And I also want to thank all of the FWC, the leadership of Rodney Beretta. I remember 10 years ago we started the Python Challenge and we had so much press there that I thought World War III had struck and we have gained, I think we're gaining on this invasive snake that is destroying the natural food chain. And without a healthy food chain, you cannot have a healthy environment. So, and I also, it's all about we, everybody. The hikers, the bikers, the wildlife photographers, the hunters, the fishermen, the environmentalists and the conservationists. All of us together on this environmental hunt to remove a snake that can get 200 pounds, 20 feet long. And that is very serious. It becomes top of the food chain. So I'm, I really want to say today that as we continue to go forward, I welcome everyone to join us in hunting this invasive snake and saving our beautiful Everglades. Because the journey of water is the life of Florida, from sawgrass to seagrass, the future generations, our quality of life, and the balance between economical growth and jobs, which are important, and the beautiful areas of our natural resources that have to be protected so we have a quality of life into the future. I remember taking the governor on September 13, 2018, developing a vision across South Florida that would affect 9 million people. We're in an airboat, and I could see his eyes developing that vision. And he has stood up to every, all promises to save this beautiful environment for all of us. And I'm so proud to be a part of that. And God bless everybody. God bless the Everglades. Long live the Everglades. And the American dream is still alive. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, that'll be it. I just want to... I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce my dear friend Eric Eichenberg, President and CEO of the Everglades Foundation. Eric, thank you for all you do for the Everglades. With that, Madam, let's go see the snake.